what the great successes, all, almost all, many of them done in England, um, the, the, the triumph of electromagnetism of James Clerk Maxwell and Michael Faraday are producing a theory that explained essentially everything we can see, everything that governs everything that's happening in this room. Gravity is irrelevant for the most part. Um, the beautiful, beautiful theory, a triumph of physics, the most beautiful theory in physics, perhaps electromagnetism. This understanding of Newton, of gravity, which changed the world, ended the burning of witches happily, we, people think, in, in, at least in, 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 in Europe by suggesting that bad effects probably had physical causes, not witches. If you could describe, if you could understand the motion of the planets around, the, if gravity was a single force that explained the dropping apples and, and an orchard in England, and also the orbits of Jupiter and the Earth and everything else around the sun, if a single theory could describe all of that, then surely we, we, we would be able to understand nature as having been causal and physical effects having physical causes. And these were, this is scientific truth. But it, what I want to point out to you is now we know there is no such thing as scientific truth in an absolute sense. And I think it's the biggest revolution because it really hits at the heart of what scientists really wanted to know about the universe. And, and, and I, want to give you, I want to give you a brief two-minute example before I end. And that's this theory, the quantum theory of electromagnetism, which which is, tells you how electrons relate with light. This is a Feynman diagram. It's the best theory we have in nature. It, it, and I want to give, it's the best tested theory in nature. If we measure something called the magnetic moment of the electron, we calculate it in theory. And here's the experimental measurement of, or let's see, that's the theoretical prediction. This is the experimental measurement. There's nowhere else in nature from fundamental principles we predict a quantity to 13 decimal places that agrees with experiment. There's nowhere else in science where this can be done. There's no better theory in nature where fundamental principles of the interaction of particles, of electrons with photons, can give you a prediction and that it can be tested against experiment, which is done with unbelievable precision. There's no better claim to scientific truth than quantum electronics, but it's not true. We know it's not true in a fundamental sense because it doesn't describe nature on all scales. We know that, and in fact, the, 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 the seeds of that lie in the theory itself. The theory predicts that, in fact, it's in addition to the particles that make up an atom, protons and electrons, there are these virtual particles popping in and out of existence all the time on a time scale so short that we can't see them. But those virtual particles have an effect. If we try and measure the charge on an electron, which is something fundamental, or should be fundamental, it depends on how you measure it. Because there are virtual particles popping in and out, particle, antiparticle pairs popping in and out of existence, and if an electron-positron pair pops into space, the positron will want to hang out closer to the electron, because it's attracted to it, and the negative charge will be pushed away to it, from it. If we measure the charge on the electron on this scale, now we'll be measuring the fundamental charge plus the effect of all these positive charges. The charge on an electron will depend on the scale at which you measure it. The theory, which has something called the fine structure constant, is not absolute. It depends on the scale you measure. And in fact, if we look at it, we now know that, that, that actually all the forces in nature change in strength. And depending upon the energy scale you have or the distance scale you measure them, and maybe up here, maybe up there, they come together to be a new theory. There's no theory of science that we have in physics that is true on all scales. There is no fundamental scientific truth. All scientific theories are provisional. They explain perfectly the phenomena with which they're designed to explain. Newton's law of gravity explains cannonballs and rocket ships around Earth perfectly. You don't need Einstein. It's true today as it was back then. Electromagnetism works to allow us to create the technology on which this everything we're doing today is based. But it's provisional. On that scale, it works. On a much smaller scale, electromagnetism doesn't even exist as a theory. It's unified with another theory called the weak interaction, and it looks very different. So we now have come to realize kicking and screaming that we who are searching for scientific truth, there is no absolute scientific truth. At least no known scientific theory applies on all scales.
String theorists think they may have discovered a theory that does, but there's no evidence of that. And as Anthony described so beautifully, right now, we should be skeptical. So, we must never stop being prepared to change our minds. I guess that's what I wanted to show you. Science, by an example, demonstrates that even when it comes to the most fundamental things we think about, a static universe, the nature of nothing, and the nature of truth, the things that many philosophers might say are immutable at some scale, that scientists have been willing to throw out those ideas like yesterday's newspaper when the universe tells us otherwise. And that is a paradigm. That's why science is such a useful example, I think, for the rest of the world, especially compared to religion, which is based on absolute truths, which of course aren't true. Thanks. Thank you, Lawrence. Are your minds blown, or is it just me?